Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk about a catastrophic engine failure. This thing is really horrid, really, really horrid, and a reminder to keep your oil changed all the time. Come on in and we'll take a look at this. The, the car came to us rattling very, very badly. Well, the reason it was rattling badly, we've lined the bearings up here, is there was no, there was no uh, top shell on this bearing. It was completely gone. Well, it wasn't gone. It had just changed locations. It ended up in the bottom of the sump. Right? So, what we figure happened here, something happened to our, to our main uh, uh, oil gallery here on the center main. That starved for oil. Got pretty hot. You know, it, you know it got really hot because it would appear as though the backing of these thrust washers, which is steel, um, it would appear as, it appear as though these, these things almost turned blue with the heat. Once the oil got, got screwed up going to the center main, the center main feeds out to number two and number three rods. And here's number three rod. Gosh, these are beautiful for an example of how horrid things can get. Here we've got just a ridge which is starting on the side of this bearing on the back of the shell. But this, oh, this is hammered. I mean, this stuff, you just don't, you don't see this kind of damage. Um, we don't, not anymore. Now the, the, uh, the oil also was starved to the number two main bearing. And this is so bad that this was, these were fused to the crankshaft. We had to take a chisel, knock them off. They also they also ran, which means the bearing started spinning, and the journal here, the number two main, is very, very ridged, much more so than a 78 record or something. So the number one main bearing, oh, he shows, you know, he shows a lot of wear, coppering. You know, that's not too uncommon. Uh, the number, the number uh, four, he shows a lot of wear and coppering. The number five main down here, again, a lot of wear and coppering. The number four rod, again, we're, we're, we're oil starved here. So why did this thing oil starve? It, it came in, it left our shop with oil, it returned to our shop with oil. We've taken our oil filter apart. Well, let me show you the crankshaft first. You can see the, the enormous amount of heat created here because the center of this has turned blue. And you can see that these things have turned blue in spots. The number two, this is hard to hold it up here, the number two main bearing here is, I mean, that's just, it was fused to the journal. This thing, this thing suffered such a failure. Oh my gosh. We were hoping, you know, it was rattling, we were hoping just to take it apart and put in a crank and, and bearings. Not this guy, the block, the block is toast, the rods are toast, to use a breakfast analogy to an engine. Well, come on, we'll come on over here and uh, take, a, take a peek at the oil filter. We wondered, was, was the oil filter faulty? So we took the oil filter apart. You know, the oil comes up, up the middle, uh, out on, uh, rather it comes on the outside, goes through the, goes through the uh, fabric. We found this inside the oil filter. It looks like carbon. What in the world is this? We don't know. Another very, very unusual thing on the engine, on the front side of the webbing that holds the, the main bearings, we found this crusty stuff. Is that any different from this crusty stuff? I don't think so. But what is it? And it's only on the front side of the webbing, not the back side of the webbing that holds the, the main bearings. So, we, uh, we got jammed up. We could not fix this engine, and we've had to find a substitute engine to put in, into the car. So, catastrophic damage is, is unusual. Uh, if you keep your oil filled up, change frequently, doesn't happen. And if you get a hint, a hint of low oil pressure, or a hint of rattling in the engine, please stop the engine right away. Don't drive it until it quits by itself, which is what happened here. Hey, we have a birthday party coming up in January. Please look at our website. Um, I'll be in the Chicago 
at the swap meet, at least I hope so. I've uh, sent my registration in, and the Jim Evans and the Chicago Land Club organize all that. So if you can't get up here to Grand Rapids to see us, we'll see you in Chicago. After that, we'll be in Denver for the British Motor Trade Association meeting at Paul Deershaw's shop, Sports Car Craftsman, in Arvada. That should be a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for all your support. We'll be sending out an email newsletter soon. See you later.